Hey, it's Jade joining you from the current headquarters here in downtown St. Paul and welcoming you to another one of our virtual sessions. And today we are joined by the ever wonderful Josh Ritter. Hello, Josh. <laughs> How's it going? How are you doing? Uh, it's I'm I'm doing really well. How are you doing? <laughs> It's a, it's a, it, I'm, I'm here in my, uh, I'm here in my house, and uh, it's, it's, it's a, it's a, it's, it's a strange time, but, but I'm so happy to see you. It's awesome. Yeah, yeah. So nice to see you too, and happy belated birthday. Uh, I oh, saw that you. you, you put on a, a show for, for your birthday, and actually in your home with your family, and yeah. I, I've been curious about this because, uh. This is such a strange time, and we are doing these performances in such a different way that you're really sort of taking off the veil and inviting people into your home, and your fans are seeing you with your family. And is this something that is uh, a really welcome experience, or is it a, a strange experience for you? Can you tell us a little bit about how it's been? Well, I think that, yeah, it's, it's you know... Uh, that when you were talking about the the image that I got that that I felt you know it, it was this this kind of a this field that just has been paved over you know and and and, and stuff it will eventually go through those cracks and that's what we're all now is we're putting out our tendrils getting you know trying to like get our art up through the through the cracks that have been you know the, the stuff that's kind of been laid down on top of all this you know there's a, so much art that's underneath us right now that we are all holding in you know and 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 very you know and so so getting it out there getting that art out there which is something that i think we all need to do is 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 becoming a real experimental uh thing and and it requires a i think a fair bit of vulnerability you know and vulnerability about saying like this is this is what this is all that we can do and this is all that you know we and this is all that's important in terms of, of performing and, and playing music is is that somehow there's still a connection being made and, and i need that in my life and i that's why you know doing something on my birthday was so much fun it's like what would i want to do on my birthday except play a show you know it would be that's all i really want you know yeah the the idea of vulnerability has come up a lot uh, when I've been talking to musicians and I think, I mean, people in general, my friends in general who aren't musicians, mm -hmm. there is this vulnerability and this rawness right now that is allowing people, I think, to have conversations that they wouldn't have otherwise. And maybe yeah. that has something to do with this collection, but I, I'm curious as to why these songs, which are uh, I should note it's called See Here, I've Built You a Mansion. It's a, a new EP, mm. but it's filled with previously unreleased songs and kind of rarities, some live songs, some covers. So why these particular yeah. songs and why this collection now? Well, I, I, I felt that it was... That there was a, a time... You know, I, I'm always afraid of songs kind of getting lost, you know. And I, I don't write... I don't typically write for a record, you know, I, 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 I think that a lot of times writing, you know, when you record a record, you're sort of dipping a bucket in the river, and you're collecting that water, but there's a lot of water that flows around on the sides, you know, there's all kinds of other stuff that's out there. And so to write, uh, you know, when you're, when you're fishing, you can't, you can't be choosy about what catch, you know, you, you just got to catch a fish, you know, and like, and that's sort of how I've approach songwriting so there are certain songs that that I, I write that don't necessarily fit on the record that I'm working on at the moment and uh, and, and it, it, that doesn't mean that I don't like the songs and I and I and I and they they are they have moments that I associate with them and they were fun to write and, and I feel good about the ones that uh, that don't necessarily make a record. I didn't want them to get lost, and and you know it was coming on winter time, you know, and I was thinking about these little songs out there, and just get a little uh, some feeling for them, and and uh, I thought I wanted to put it out on, on a uh, on a record, and and it was also uh, I knew that I wouldn't be touring, you know, I wouldn't be, you know, I wanted the the record to have a little bit of a live element, so I, 
I put on a, a couple uh, tracks that were uh, either from a sound check or from a show. And, uh, you know, I, I just wanted the record to have something that wasn't, didn't feel like a full studio record, but that felt something like a little bit more uh, 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 intimate and kind of curated from a, a, a part of my career. Does that make sense? Definitely. Yeah, no, that uh, it totally comes across that way. And there is something about distance from songs, too. And I, I love the idea of songs changing and morphing. And even to the person who writes them, mm. they start to feel like a, a different song or the song, maybe the yeah. meaning behind it or the person you think of when you think of that song is different. Do you have a, a particular yeah. song where it's changed that for you? I, I find that yeah it's it, once you once you write the song you have that you have that uh, yeah I, I, I've I've written songs you know or you know or written about feelings that that I had never had before you know you know I had experienced you know and it's easy to it's easy to write about heartbreak when you haven't experienced it when you when you actually have experienced it, and then you start to see all the subtleties and the shades that go within that kind of like. Uh, heartbreak and, and, and it becomes more tricky, you know, but like, but so, but I'd say that like over time, like I've had a chance to revisit songs night by night and, and, and they do change, they change. And, and, and I catch myself thinking about them as people almost, you know, that these, you know, these, these faces that are so familiar to me, particularly because they're in my day to day life every day in, in this weird, intimate way. I love I love that thinking about songs as people. Uh, so I uh, I want us to to get to some music because I know that uh, that's what people want to hear. But I'm curious if if miles away was a person, who I who is the person that you would picture for miles away? Uh, I I think of uh, you know I was I was I was looking at this this I, I, I'm just thinking of an astronaut you know I'm thinking of somebody like impossibly far away who still seems like distant <laughs> you know <laughs> well well let's hear it it is miles away this is Josh Ritter and it's a live current virtual session all right. Came into this world, I was lost, not found Did not hold me in its arms like it holds me now So I dreamt myself a bird who could cross the waves And I woke up just a man who was miles away Miles away Miles away Miles away, miles away. So I went to Cape Canaveral and I went to the moon. And I stayed up there for a year or two. A famous picture of me above the blue parade. Man, a million miles high, still miles away. Miles away, miles away, miles away, miles away. So I went back to Kansas, it was summertime. I left flowers for my family by the riverside and At the end of his life they said my father had changed I guess we could have been friends but I was miles away Miles away Miles away Miles away Miles away Honey, you don't belong in a place like this With your long yellow hair and your hips 
But the look in your eyes is like the world from space The way the sun hits off the water from miles away Miles away Miles away Miles away Miles away Honey, can you leave your light on? 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 Miles away Miles away Miles away Miles away I, I always Thank feel you. the urge to clap. <laughs> um, we'll get to <laughs> some you. more songs, including mm -hmm. another song from the new collection that Josh Ritter has released called See Here, I've Built You a Mansion. And we just mm -hmm. heard uh, his version of Miles Away, which is on that new collection for the current virtual session. And you write, as you were saying, such beautiful stories. And I I saw that you have... Uh, a book that's going to be coming out. You have a novel yeah. uh, coming out next year. And do you yeah. do you approach your your writing when you're writing prose as opposed to when you're writing, you know, a song? Do you approach it differently, or does it all come from the same sort of place? Uh, you know, I think it all comes from the same place. But but over time, I've started to realize that like that that there's song brain and then there's novel brain, and and, and song brain can give you the uh, kind of the architecture of the house. You know, you can see the the whole story. You know, with a song. But like, but to then go inside the house and describe every nook and cranny is is really a different is different uh, kind of. Uh, 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 of animal and it's it's so every every time uh, every time I switch back and forth it's I have to remind myself like what I'm what I'm doing because they are they they do start to seem more different than I once gave them credit for although it is nice to I have to say not to always have to rhyme you know that's <laughs> that's that's a big thing <laughs> I, I do have a, a, a friend of mine uh, just got his PhD in poetry, and you wow. are one of his favorite writers because of how you wow. do unusual rhyme schemes. So my, my oh. poet doctor appreciates your, li That's your amazing. rhyme schemes. <laughs> wow, I, that, that made um, my day. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go. Uh, but I, I'm curious about this uh, this new book a little bit, if you don't mind. I know we're talking music, yeah. but because everybody's yeah. doing something a little bit different during the pandemic. So I, I'm quite happy to talk about your book as well. Yeah. Oh, well, it's like... Thank you. It's a, it's so much fun, you know. Like I, I've been, uh, I, I had had this book for a while, and uh, and uh, 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 and it, and until recently, you know, I'd just been so 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 very busy with between music and being on the road, and then with with my with my my little my little kids, you know. And it, it's just you know, there's only so much time in the day, and and uh, and so I started working on this, uh, picking it up again, this book, and it's called the the great glorious goddamn of it all, and, and it's about a, a lumberjack, um, a, a little kid who who uh, is. Um, uh, grows up in a in a little uh, timber town in northern Idaho, and it's it's kind of a a big tall tale. I'm, I'm excited about it. Well, because we're talking about books, uh, I did get uh, a listener question from Catherine, who said, "Is there any connection in the new book to Bright's Passage?" No, there's that's no there's deep, no connection. That's a deep cut question. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like my last book. I, my last book. Although I'd say there's, there's, I have about as many trees in each book. You know, I seem to <laughs> like to set my stuff underneath trees for some reason. But, but I'd say those are, those are the only recurring characters. <laughs> yeah, it, it seems like you are kind of putting on uh, many different hats right now because you're not touring. Uh, you're taking some mm -hmm. more time. I see uh, a painting in the corner, which I'm, I'm guessing yeah. is one of yours. <laughs> yeah, I'm working on it. Yeah. 
<laughs> and you you mentioned you're you're a father. You're you're dealing with uh, you know having kids at home during the pandemic. And is this? I mean, this has to be such a different lifestyle than being on the road all the time and being able to kind of press pause, even though it's maybe not exactly ideal for a musician. But has there been, um, you know, what what have you discovered about yourself in this in this time yeah. after time down? Well, I'd say that the 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 one thing that's been amazing actually was the fact that like up until up until the pan, uh, until the last year or so when bees had to be in in school, you know, B B my my oldest has been on the road with me for six or seven years, and uh, and you know so and and B and B and Haley and Moxie, you know, we we got used to living in very tight confines, uh, you know, touring all over the place, and so we were we were we were used to to, to being really close together, you know, that part has been uh, really incredible and gratifying and i feel that that like it's i've been in some ways prepared for it um one of the things that i've found that that has been really fascinating to me is like kind of getting you know t with the time off the road and and and, and being at home and, and 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 for a long time uh, has made me realize what you know thinking about more and more why i do what i'm doing you know what what is it that drives me if it's if it's if if it isn't necessarily being if you know if being off you know being off the road doesn't mean i've stopped creating you know in fact i've i think i've i've created more you know so i'm trying to figure out why and i feel that the, the art and uh, making things you know writing and, and all those things they they actually seem to help me feel like safe you know and safe and in control of something you know while at the same time giving me a, a world that i can go to in my head which is like sometimes really fantastic if you if you can't go down to the beach you know you know and then you can at least you know you can go there in your own mind sometimes <laughs> So do you do you find that you're you're writing more now? Maybe it is with like the the breath you're giving yourself, the yeah. ability and the time and space. Oh, I certainly am. The the writing is like this writing is like been something that I've 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 always I've always written a lot, but but it, it, in these 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 latter days it feels like the writing is like a gas that sort of fills up the space you know the words kind of fill up whatever space there is for them to go you know and some days it's just you wake up and you have like a a, a you know a, a couplet or something in your head and and it just rattles around in there all day until you have a chance to write it down you know other days there's like you know moxie will take you know she 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 used to take two naps and she just gave up one so we have like you know i've got two hours there where she's asleep where i can like sit down and really work on something and like and i come to it with real joy because it's that that's like it's it's been you know whatever the idea is it's been rattling around in there all day you know thinking getting yeah. weird the <laughs> I think we're all getting a little weird at this point, and it's only yeah, going exactly, to get, yeah. you know, more, the more family time you have, you, you'll have several children's books that'll be out by the end of this year. I can already see it. Uh, I, I want to get to uh, another song. We'll continue to chat and continue sure. to uh, have some more questions here, but uh, let's hear another song off of See Here, I've Built You, a mansion, the new EP, which is out now from Josh Ritter on the current virtual session. All right. So I was thinking maybe, can I do time is wasting? Is that all right? Yes, please. Do that. <laughs> all right. Cold feather blue is the color of the moonlight. Climb out your window, honey, tell me that I ain't right. Mom, paint the bottom of your feet with silver The river let you cross while it's looking in the mirror Come on, honey, time is wasting Hear the hasten, run the front porch, jump the rain Come on, pretty honey, baby, time is wasting I used to be bad, people used to get hurt So bad, the better would still have been the worst yeah, you took me to the garden, but you took me to the light You took me to the mountain, and you gave my heart a sigh Come on, honey, time is wasted 
Hither hasten, and run the front porch, jump the rail, and come on, baby, hunger. Time is wasted. Time is wasted. These days have made a change in me. I can see the exchange. Everything will be fine Over and over I will take your name Nothing will be different and nothing will be the same Come on honey, time is wasting Hear the haste and run the front porch Jump the rail on many honey baby Time is wasting, time, time is wasting Hear the haste and run the front porch Jump the rail and come on pretty honey baby Time is wasting Time is wasted These days Have made A change In me I can see They change Time is wasting. That is on the new collection out from Josh Ritter. See here, I've built you a mansion. And I, I love that, that title because it is kind of what you were talking about earlier with, uh, you know, songs having the architecture and, you know, going into the nooks and crannies if you're writing a book. Is that kind of what you were thinking about? Like, this is the, the giant mansion. There's all these different rooms. There's all these different songs to, yeah. to go in and investigate. Yeah, I, that's what I, I feel that like oftentimes like the, the what I think about songs is that they're like these beautiful long hallways that you can like you can wander down the hallway that somebody's built for you you know and and, and, and you but the doors the doors to either side that you can go through are, are are once you go through those doors you're on your own you're out there and so songs can like I feel songs help me oftentimes when I listen to music they help me to wander off into various places you know and uh, and and that's a wonderful thing about music so I, I do think of them kind of architecturally yeah is there a particular song or a particular artist that you've been listening to uh in in your in these recent months or is it mainly just focusing in on your own writing well yeah you know my listening habits have changed uh because i've i've been home and, and i haven't been on the road and i have you know i my you know we, we have music on but I, I i i'm a big believer in spontaneously choosing stuff that that you really want to you know you really you, I, I found that like what i've found most recently that i've really discovered just by just by uh, kind of keeping my ears open, was as, uh, as a as a singer from the from the twenties and thirties named Sophie Tucker, who I uh, I just am in, in love with, uh, an amazing an amazing writer, great great performer, you know. And then then I I think you know like Sophie Tucker or, or you know the the there are these people that that I will associate with with this moment, you know, with uh, with. Uh, with 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 this time that we're living in and that have you know it's so funny that she was she was she was at this you know a hundred years ago and and like and but but her work now speaks to me in this moment and that in some ways is 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 very similar given given this pandemic and and, and et cetera you know yeah it, That's it a long is way strange of saying. That... i'm listening to kind of all sorts of stuff <laughs> <laughs> I like that. It's all, it's all around about. Um, I should ask yeah. a question from Suzanne, which is kind of a, uh, in a similar vein. Is there a book that you've read recently or do you listen to audiobooks? Um, uh, books that I've I've been reading recently. Let's see. Like, uh, uh, yeah. I mean, I do. I love I love audiobooks. I love um, you know. I, I I'm I'm deep deep in a uh, in a period. I'm where I'm reading a lot about ancient Egypt right now because I, I I'm Ooh. working on something and I'm just uh, and I'm like it's really fun and I'm I I, I have I have you know when you start off every every project with these grand and stuff and and I realize no I really don't know about what I what I want to work on, and so in the in the in 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 that in that world of reading about ancient Egypt and 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 it's 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 
you know, it's a, it's absolutely amazing to like read deeply and, and like listen to stuff and, and, and research and to realize that you're only like kind of the tiniest few drops of, of this amazing world, you know, it's incredible. What, what's what been the most interesting or the most recent that you can remember that you were like, what? That happened in ancient Egypt? What's been the, what's been the, the mind blower lately? Oh. Okay, well, there's this, there's this, uh, there's this kind of uh, the, this interesting thing that the that the that the the pharaoh would be buried with, where he would be holding like a, a, a like a like a like a it looked like a it's called a flail, you know, it looked like a like a thing with some like beads. It's for actually for uh, trailing through roses to capture the pollen that was then turned to incense called lamb. And uh, when they couldn't, when they when they couldn't get it from the roses, they would go to the goats who ate the roses, and they would comb the labdanum out of the out of the beards of the goats. And this uh, this little object that the that the pharaoh was buried with was a ceremonial one of those. So so I was wondering what one of them was, and and, and now I know. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> Have you been able to smell that smell? Are there incense today yes. being made from? There are. Yes, you can you can get you can get loud in them and you can put it on and, and you know and if you're if you're working away on your on your ancient Egypt project you might just put it put it put it out there you know and, and, and it gets you in, you know in the right frame of mind yeah I know well now it's, now it that's all like I'm gonna be and I'm gonna leather. go home yeah yeah I, I guess. I guess I could be into <laughs> that um, well so <laughs> I I wanted to ask you about uh, and this is kind of a one that I've been asking a lot of people, because you're a musician, you spend a lot of time on the road and going to various venues all over the world. And right mm -hmm. now, a lot of these independent venues are are struggling. And uh, is there an independent venue that you have strong ties to or that you would love to be on the stage of again right now? Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, well, there's just, there, there are so many places that, like, you walk into the first time, and you know, and you walk out of, and and uh, and they've been a part of your indelible your experience for for you know for for a, a decade, you know, maybe. And, and one of those places is definitely the Fitzgerald, which is like you know one of those theaters that just like. It's wonderful to to be at, and you know, like the like, but like there 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 are venues of the the country that are just that you know you are involved in you know the memories that are made there. Everybody, you know, like you know, the, it's it's the place is 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 like a, a, a like a, a campfire that you get a chance to like be with other people around, you know, and you know, it's like it's for 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 those of us who are kind of like uh, a little bit, you know, it's it, it's a it's a it's a little bit like the the the, the feeling that, that we we wish we could get in, in other places. This this feeling of togetherness and and, and uh, that that comes from being at a at a venue and and listening to music is a, is a is a remarkable experience. And 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 uh, you know, I I have faith that we're we're gonna we're we're gonna we're gonna have those again. But I think it's gonna be a hard road. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, I can't, I can't wait <laughs> until we're, I, I, mm. I miss that. I miss oh. the sweaty people next to me. I miss, you know, the smell yeah. of like the stale beer smell, even there is oh, something isn't it the about best? that. that it's I, the best. I know. It's a, it's a oh, stuff you that you, you miss like, the most. I remember at like at like at, at on tour, you know, the venue will open usually at noon, and and you know, if you've been on the road and you need to take a shower, the venue showers. You walk in, and it's like the smell of noon after a big night of a show in this venue, and that the beer is still there in the room. You can still smell it, and you can still smell the kind of the lingering notes. It's like an amazing experience. Like I, I, I can't <laughs> wait. I can't wait. <laughs> I'll, I'm gonna I'm gonna work on the incense for that as well. Uh, yes, we had that's a, a great listener. idea. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> we have uh, a listener question from Steve, who said that he discovered your music through songs being featured in the movie The Hollers, and he wanted to know oh, yeah. how that came about 
And how did you like the use of your music in that movie? Well, that was it. Was it was uh, the I I I my music was used in 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 the hollers. You know, it, 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 it's it's I think first off that it's really amazing when 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 music gets used in in, in all kinds of stuff because it's it's so cool to see the kind of dovetailing of of artistic visions between like what is happening on the screen versus what's happening on the music. I mean, when it happens, and we all know that when that happens and it lines up, it can be just totally a magical experience and bring bring about something beautiful in the movie and, and make you realize the music. I think that's just incredible. Uh, so uh, I I uh, was used there because I had met, uh, um, uh, th through playing music, I had met John Krasinski, who is, uh, who is the, the director and in that movie and, and, and really, you know, very involved with, with the making of that and, and, and wanted to use my music and had, had been really working to use my music in, in, in a couple of uh, other projects that he was working on. And, and, uh, and so I was really excited to, to get to do that. You know, it was that, you know, like there's all, all, I don't know how I ever thought that stuff actually happened, but it, it really doesn't, it, you know, it still happens organically, you know, the kinds of way and facilitate that sort of once it actually happens. But, but when that moment comes along where there's an interesting moment like cinema and, and music, it's really like, there's just, there's, there's just long works for the scene or not. And it's so cool when it does. Yeah, I think those are some of my favorite movie moments are when a song sort of solidifies it, you know, and just oh, ma yeah. it makes that moment so much better. I yeah, that's, now yeah. I'm thinking about Amy Mann and Mon uh, Magnolias and oh, yeah, and now that's yes. <laughs> you know, but oh, there are no those kidding. just like key moments. And now and you're Absolutely. that for Steve with your music and the oh, holler. That's, that's um, amazing. Well, I, I want to get one last song in here uh, before we say goodbye, because I know, you know, you've got you've got your life and your family going on in the background <laughs> there. So um, I, I want to say again, the new album is called See Here, I Have Built You a Mansion. And let's get another song from Josh Ritter on the Currents Virtual Session. All right, I'll do this song. This is like, this is this is this is an old song, and I really wanted to do it. So, and I hope everybody's voting, and uh, yeah, rock and roll. Peter said to Paul, "You know all those words we wrote." Just the rules of the game and the rules are the first to go. But now he's talking about his laurel begging and a hearty for gun. I got a girl in the war, man, I wonder what it is we've done. Paul said to Peter, you gotta rock yourself a little harder. And the dove from above is a dragon and your feet are on fire But I got a girl in the war, Paul, the only thing I know to do Is turn up the music and pray that she makes it through Because the keys to the kingdom got locked inside the kingdom Angels fly around in there, and we can't see them. And I got a girl in the war, Paul, I know that they can hear me yell. If they can't find a way to help her, they can go to hell. If they can't find a way to help her, they can go to hell.
Paul said to Peter, you gotta rock yourself a little harder. Pretend the dove from above is a dragon and your feet are on fire. But I got a girl in the war, Paul, her eyes are like champagne. They sparkle bubble over and in the morning all you got is rain. Sparkle bubble over and in the morning all you got is rain They sparkle bubble over and in the morning all you got is rain Hey And that was just absolutely beautiful. <laughs> thank you. This is, yes, thank you. This is The Current's <laughs> virtual session and Josh's new album, See Here, I Have Built You a Mansion, is out now. Uh, Josh, thank you so much for talking with us and thank you so much for bringing us your well, beautiful you, music. Yeah, thank this you was so wonderful. much. Thanks for having me. Thanks for trying this out. I love this. This is great. This was cool. <laughs> yeah. Oh, this was fun. Uh, thanks for welcoming us into your yeah. home. And, and thank you to our technical producers, Jesse and Derek, and thank you to our engineer, Eric. And thank you so much for listening and for joining us and for being members and asking questions. A special shout out to Suzanne and Steve and who else asked that beautiful question right at the beginning? Ah, Catherine. Yeah, thank you so much for your questions, and uh, hopefully we'll be doing more of these. So keep an eye out for our next live virtual session.